Figaro, 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 so this is the 1991 Nissan Figaro. It was kind of a special project and they did this retro styling based on European roadsters and stuff. Basically, if Hello Kitty went on an Italian vacation, this is what she would drive. In fact, there's actually Hello Kitty up here. But everything's very Japanese. Everything is in Japanese. This was a JDM car. But the coolest thing about the Figaro is the roof. So. Let's open up this roof. I'll show you how to do this. Step one, we're gonna open these guys. Step two, down here, there's actually a switch. I'm gonna move so you can see exactly where that is. So if you ever steal a Figaro, you'll know how to do this. Now that releases this little hatch. And we just take this nice and easy because we do have a glass panel back here that's not that's not plastic. Please don't poop on my Figaro. And now your Figaro has a convertible target top. Let's take a look under the hood because what powers this car is actually really fun. This is an inline four one liter turbo engine that makes 75 horsepower. So if we do the math, that's 75 horsepower per liter, but that's plenty because the car only weighs about 1700 pounds. And funny enough, just like my M3, they used composite fenders to, to lighten it. That engine made it to a three speed automatic and it will do 106 miles per hour, which we will absolutely not be doing today. And other than this very small child's back seat, which I don't think I would wanna put anybody in, we have a small storage area here. There's a little prop here, but in here you've got your spare tire, a jack, and uh, room for I, really just about nothing. But the most fun thing to do with this car is drive it. Let's get out there. If you've never driven a right-hand drive car before, it takes a little bit of getting used to. I mean, the number one thing is just to be following the fog line instead of the yellow line, and you, you start to realize how much you do rely on markings as a driver but the adjustment's pretty simple. And this, they only came in automatics, so you're not worrying about learning to shift with your left hand. That, that does take a little bit of work. Now we're on 12 inch wheels, and that means they've got big old sidewalls. You'd think that it would be terrifying to hit a bump in a car like this, I did. Uh, it absorbs it really nicely. In fact, I think this ride is smoother than the Hummer because there's so much sidewall and it's so forgiving that you do kind of glide over stuff. Now, obviously you don't want to hit anything too big because there's still only so much tire on the car. If you hit a pothole, that's game over. Everybody points at you, everybody smiles, everybody laughs. It's wonderful. This car is a joy and you just feel like singing the whole time. And part of the reason that it's a joy is because it inspires confidence. This isn't scary to drive. You've got a four link rear suspension. You've got disc brakes up front, drums in the rear. That's fine. And the steering is incredibly direct. Everything about it is just a driver focused little machine. It's, it's fun. You know, this could be terrifying, but because it's a 91, it's a relatively modern car. It's not a 60s car like it, it kind of uh, appears to be. It just, it starts right up. You get in, you put it in drive and you go. I'm not certain if this technically qualifies as a micro car, but it's as close as you're gonna get without going to like a little Messerschmitt or a Metropolitan. So you always wanna be checking your six because if somebody's not paying attention, I mean, you're toast. There's no way you're gonna survive getting rear-ended in this by anything like an H2 or a Jeep. Like, you're, you're gone, that's, that's game over.
See, these kind of bumps, this is where you want to just take it easy. No way! Metropolitans, so cool. 59 Mets. We're about the same size as these guys. That's great. That's what micro cars are all about. I've seen people put like 454s in these. You might know about the figure already because it's been popularized by Jerry Seinfeld on comedians in cars getting coffee. <laughs> Everybody loves the figure. I'm telling you, you can't not smile in this thing. I think being in quarantine sucks because I would love to go drive through like a crowd of people, not through a crowd of people, near a crowd of people. Because it just, it brings everybody joy. This car is hilarious just to look at. I love how connected I feel to the car. Like, you can really just enjoy it. It's such a great little runabout. You don't want to speed in it, but you, I mean, it doesn't take much speed to feel like you're going fast. It's like riding a bike. This is the car version of a Vespa. There's a little bit of a blind spot there, but if you angle the car, you're good to go. And with the windows up and the roof down, it's so calm in here. You really don't, you don't get wind noise. So at like 60, 65 miles per hour, it's a very comfortable place to be. You don't get cold as long as it's not freezing outside, but it's not bad. There's not a lot of wind in here. This is like really well made. What happened, Nissan? Do more weird projects. Hey, all right, 964. We got the we got the nod from the 964 Carrera 2. The Figaro is officially cool. Cruising speed on the Figaro on the highway, you can do 65. That happens around here, so it's not the most comfortable experience. Now we're trapped because he's sped up and he's matching our speed. Not good. We're going to let him pass us because I can't hold that speed. Let's just hope we don't have anything fly out. He's very proud of himself. Good for you. This one we can comfortably overtake. He's right hand drive too. The thing about driving the Figaro on the highway is that you're slower than everybody. So anyone coming up upon you is just trying to figure out what the heck they're looking at. So like I see a wall of traffic behind me right now and everyone's gonna take a peek. You've just gotta make sure that 
they're not distracted and veering onto different lanes while they take their pictures or give you a thumbs up or something. It's like driving a really slow Lamborghini. This is when it gets a little bit frightening when this comes up next to you. It's like that Top Gear episode when they're driving their little boats in the open ocean near like cargo container ships. I'm not scared. I'm not scared at all. You're scared. I only applied sunscreen to my face. That was a bad call. All right, let's get off this highway. I'm terrified. I really do want to get a right-hand drive car in my garage. Probably something like an R33 GTST. Just, you know, a twelve to $15,000 runabout. It doesn't need to be a monster. I don't need a GTR. This would be on the list. It's just that I think I would rather have something a little more like suitable for highway driving because I do a lot more highway driving. But if I had like a little house on the water or in, the, in a small town in the mountains, the Figaro would be so cool because it just brings joy. You, you're happy when you drive it. The Hummer, I love the Hummer. The Hummer is fantastic, but it's a stressful drive. You know, you're you're on the lookout all the time for what, what you're going to kill. Whereas with this one, you're more just looking for like, oh, that's a pretty bird, and hopefully that doesn't cross the lane and, and kill me. It's all about experiences. And every car has a different kind of personality, a different soul. It's really worth exploring that. I think people put too much focus on having technology or power and those are part of a car's personality for sure but I mean what's the driving experience like this is very low power we're under 100 horsepower we've got this great roof it's just I can't think of a more fun car that I've driven than the Figaro the Hummer I'd probably have to come to a complete stop and this, <laughs> you just buzz around. Uh, Marie Kondo always asks about objects that you own. Does it spark joy? And the Figaro sparks so much joy. How can you ever release this from your possessions if you owned one? You'd have to keep it. You'd have to maintain it. You'd have to love it. It's so fantastic. They made 20,000 of these. So they are out there, but you've just got to find one and uh, get it in your garage. We'll end this by a lake as much as I can get you to a lake like we're in some small Italian village. Not quite, but I'll take it. So thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. If you love the Figaro, give it a like. I know I do. I'll see you in the next one. And don't forget to respect the drive.